Nearly everyone starts off by calling tier 6, and it's the best way to master basic skills for calling. Before moving up to 8, callers should be able to call throughout each tier 6 skirmish as well as effectively move each tank as they need to quickly. That's why this video exists. A Combat Officer's Guide to Tier 6 Strongholds, Part 1. This is the third video in this Combat Officer series, so feel free to go back and watch the previous videos to avoid missing anything. The link to the full playlist will be right here. Again, this video is divided into sections. If you're here only for a specific aspect of Tier 6, feel free to skip to the corresponding section. Specific strategies on specific maps will be listed in a second video that was linked here. Tier 6 is far less balanced than Tier 8 and 10, with a few exceptions. This means lineups are pretty limited, with terms of meta focus. At the same time though, because Tier 6 is a very beginner-oriented game mode, you really can run with just about anything as long as you know what you're doing, to an extent. However, there are a couple things that you definitely should avoid. Artie for one, for obvious reasons. Again, it's perfectly possible to win with Artie at tier 6. It's just usually going to be much more difficult. Heavy tanks work the same way. In tier 6, you only have 7 vehicles to cover the entirety of the map. This means that you will need to be moving constantly to adjust for which parts of the map the enemy team is using. Mobility is an absolute necessity for this. Heavy tanks just can't provide the needed mobility for this on many maps. On certain maps, they also spawn completely separately from the rest of your team, and you waste time compensating for that. They're slow, they'll get caught out, and they'll die. Most teams at Legion Air 4 that run heavies exemplified these flaws, and the caller often simply didn't know what to do with them. The only exception to this in many cases is when you decide to super camp, but I'll be explaining why that's its own issue in the general tactics section. So, you may be wondering, what do we use to maximize flexibility and your chance to win? Well, as I mentioned, you can do a variety of things to find what you're comfortable with. A simple layout for you to build off of, and the one that I will be using in the following video regarding map tactics, is one light tank, one tank destroyer, and five mediums. The light tank can be pretty much any tier 6 light. I would avoid the VK-2801 and the A46 if at all possible. Those two are pretty terrible. I typically run with a Type 64, T37, or AMX-12T, depending on what people are interested in playing. Again, it doesn't matter too much, as long as you trust the player who's in the light tank to know what they're doing in a light tank, then it's fine. The tank destroyer is a bit more specific. Yes, you can use things like the SU-100 or the dreaded box tank or the IKV-65-2, Jagdpanzer, etc., but they don't really work as well. Again, this falls under my flexibility point from earlier. You need your tanks to be able to move quickly and accomplish many different tasks, as seven tanks isn't enough to be able to specialize roles too much. What I mean by this is if you bring an OI, for example, which is fairly useful on Himmelsdorf, it will be next to useless on a map like Prokhorovka. The best TDs will be the Hellcat and the T-78. Again, other TDs work, but not really as well as these two, as they both have the turret as well as the mobility to make up for any kind of weakness of the gun. For the mediums, the best will be Cromwell's T-3485Ms, A-43s, tanks of that nature. You really should always have T-3485Ms, or just regular T-3485s, on your team. They really are just overpowered for this game mode, as I was talking about before. Balance of Tier 6 is pretty shit, uh, and they should be fo the focal point of your lineup. I would limit Kramis and A-43s to 2, as they cannot hold positions or trade nearly as effectively as the 85Ms. 85Ms will hold positions on corners, while Kramis and A-43s will be flexible enough to take flanking positions, typically. Other mediums work, just not as well or as consistently as these three types. I personally used only 585 85Ms in my example in the next video. Obviously, this is just what works best for me. As a caller, you have to figure out what lineup works for you. I still beg you to avoid using too many heavies and artillery, though. Again, the main reason for this is because at the beginning of any game that you are calling, your first priority is to take control of as much of the map as possible. You want to limit the enemy team's movement while making sure that you have as much control as you possibly can, without having any tanks completely isolated that will get dis demolished by a full push by the enemy team. Again, I'll give some examples of that in the second video where I'm going over the specific strategies. And now for the general tactics. I don't want to go into too many specifics in this section, as I will be sending ages going over each map in the next video anyway, but if you don't want to watch that one, here's your basic guide. Start off each battle by reading both teams. If the enemy have a lot of heavies on an open map, for example, you can play more aggressively than you typically do and take away key positions early, because you know for a fact that they're not going to be able to leave their base as quickly as you can leave yours. Try to avoid using Legionnaires wherever possible. I said this in a previous video in this series, but it is very important. Usually a single good player can completely tilt the battle to carry you. A good player at tier 6 is one-seventh of the team. They're going to be able to get four kills 
pretty easily against an average team. Which is nice, but it prevents you from getting your own practice in. Also, the Legionnaires with higher stats are usually used to doing their own thing and therefore are treated as assholes. Um, I noticed this when I got consistently shit-talked as a Legionnaire, but that's a conversation for therapy. Calling out Focus Fire is not always your job. If you play the light tank and are away from a combat or a push, it's the job of the other players in the midst of the action to call out Focus Fire on the lowest health or biggest threat. One of the most important things, especially at Tier 6, is to stagger your team, but you cannot completely split them up. What I mean by stagger is that your team should be in different positions while still being able to support one another. Yes, the faster mediums are for flanking, but if you move them so far away from the main fight while you're flanking, they'll be entirely out of the fight, guaranteeing a swift death for your holding tanks. Another reason that this is important is because artillery at Tier 6, with a direct hit, will kill anything and up to two tanks. If the enemy team drops an artillery strike on a group of tanks that are close together, you're going to lose the game, because they're all going to die. By splitting up just a little bit, you can avoid this, as well as have it so that if the enemy team tries to overpush onto a certain tank, everything else on your team should be able to turn their guns to that point and shoot into them as they push over. If you're against a full team of Cromwells or something that is completely ridiculous like that, a full team of Cromwells or a full team of OIs or a full team of KV-2s or anything like that, adjust your strategy to adjust for the fact that the enemy team is going to be doing something unorthodox. Against a full team of Cromwells, for example, recognize that they're just going to YOLO into you and set up to receive it. By separating your tanks slightly and knowing where the push will come from, as well as focus firing on a single tank at a time, Cromwell pushes are pretty much free wins. And against things like heavy tanks, you can expect that the enemy team is going to be playing very slowly or camping altogether, in which case you want to be able to split up your team and surround the enemy and slowly chip away at them. You should have your TD set up with binos and leave it at a distance, with direct overwatch either over your lone light tank or the main engagement that you expect to occur on the map, again depending on what you think is going to be more important. Engage the main area you want with the 85Ms, move your faster mediums around the side, while you have your light tank try to gather as much information as possible about where the enemy team is moving. My recommended lineup isn't designed as a full-on rush strategy, but as a tactic to first determine where the enemy is and then make a committing move. I find this particularly useful at tier 6. Again, only 7 tanks, you cannot cover the entire map at once, you have to be able to pick one side. In order to pick one side, if you know what the enemy team is doing before you make your move, you don't risk over committing as much as if you try to play aggressively right off the bat. If the enemy team is running 7 mediums, for example, you can't just out-trade them head-on as you don't have the DPM or health from using a light and tank destroyer. You need information. Besides those points and what I've said in previous videos in the series, I can't really give any more points of advice except... I spent weeks as a legionnaire for various clans in order to get footage and different perspectives for this video. And while there are many mistakes made, the most upsetting one by far is how many teams just camp every single match. This is probably the most common and obvious flaw being made by callers of tier 6, a lot of callers of tier 8, uh, and some callers of tier 10. If you don't camp already, or don't need any convincing, you don't need to watch this section, unless you want to learn why it's a good thing that you're not camping. Go watch my in-depth strategy video on each map that's in the next video. I just want to explain the reasoning against camping strategies, and if you do frequently camp, hopefully I can convince you as to why that is a very limited tactic. First reason, you will be beaten consistently by better teams. Camping pretty much guarantees you a minimum of a draw against any team that is lower in skill level than you. Against better teams, though, with callers who actually know what they're doing to break a camp, you'll get your ass kicked. Consistently. Against nearly every camp, there is a set order of positions that you can take to break it. If the caller knows these set positions, or if the enemy players simply shoot better than your guys in a fair fight, you're screwed. Second reason, you will be extremely limited in improvement. There is only so much positioning and teamwork you can manage in a single corner of the map and you, as a caller, are getting very little practice in by camping. Each camp I participated in as a legionnaire consisted of the caller saying, we're gonna play defensively, and everyone headed to the corner. No. Just, no. That's not calling. That's just sitting there and waiting to die. Third reason, you are dragging the game out. Even if you do win, each battle will take much longer than typical battles. They'll be considerably less fun, though you may disagree, who knows. A draw is also a huge possibility. The enemy team may just not push you, or they may push you at the very end of a match, saving one tank to ensure a draw. 
I often heard the line, a draw is better than a loss. No, it's not. A draw is a loss for both teams. You are spiting the enemy team, sure, but what's the point of doing that besides pride? You are not winning, and you are robbing the enemy team of a win. Especially if they're actually deserving the win, because they are not camping. You are also, once again, not taking away anything to learn from playing this way. You are not improving, you're going to be sitting at a standstill. Fourth reason, you are at the mercy of your opponent. From a camping position, the only time you can leave the base is when you have successfully lowered the health of your opponent to the point that an easy push out of the base becomes viable. Again, if the enemy team knows what they are doing, this will not occur. Tier 6 is especially important for this. Again, because of artillery, able to take out a tank very easily at Tier 6, meaning that if you're sitting still, it's going to be a bit of a problem. And you don't have the tanks with consistent armor. An 85M can pen any Tier 6 tank with gold easily. You cannot rely on a full heavy lineup to survive longer than your opponent unless they were already bad enough that you could have beaten them without camping anyway. The reason I want to emphasize this is because the people who tend to camp are the ones that recognize the fact that when they camp they seem to have a better success rate. That is not true, it's really just an illusion. The fact that you're playing against worse teams than you that you would have beaten anyway if you had tried to push out means that that is something that is robbing you of the experience of playing the game the way it was meant to be played, by, you know, leaving the base. So really what my point is, is that not only is camping giving you a disadvantage tactically, it's also just making the game less fun. And again, you can still disagree with me. If you watched the end of this segment, I thank you. If you camp consistently but want to learn a different way of calling, I hope these two videos will help you. Sorry for taking so long on these videos, by the way. Feel free to check out the full playlist or just the next tier 6 video. Happy tank.